It's not exactly South American weather in Manchester this afternoon, but Ricky Villar seems to be living well off his Wembley goals against today's opponents. He recently scored three in five games and hasn't looked back since the shock of being substituted in the first cup final. And that was the match in which Tommy Hutchison scored at both ends. He was 34 last Tuesday, and the following night he starred in City's 4-0 win here over Leeds. But injuries in that match to Trevor Francis and Paul Power have left City with a depleted squad, especially as they recently sold Tony Henry and Dave Bennett, and two men playing today, Joe Corrigan and Jerry Gow, both face operations. The two players who come in, Martin O'Neill in midfield and Phil Boyer up front, are the only two of the 11 who start who didn't take part in that cup final saga. Spurs also field nine of their cup final team, the exceptions being Ray Clements in goal and Mark Falco at number 11. And Tottenham are praying that neither Falco nor Steve Archibald get injured now, because Garth Crooks is not ready to make his reserve team come back today. Gary Brook had a cartilage operation last night, and Chris Jones is also injured again. So with big European and League Cup commitments ahead, Spurs' strike force is getting thin. The referee today is Mike Peck from Kendall. Spurs, who start the match in white shirts from the right, haven't won at Main Road in the league since the 1970-71 season. And City, by contrast, haven't lost a league match here since last October, a run which began when they beat Spurs in John Bond's second match as City manager. Their recovery began that night. Here's Ardiles for Tottenham. Paul Miller to Glenn Hoddle. Rain still belting down, as it has been for the last three or four hours in Manchester. And it won't be a day for defenders to take too many risks. There's Jerry Gow, but there will be mistakes, I fancy, on this greasy surface. Joe Corrigan, the city captain, in the absence of Paul Power. by Boyer on Houghton. It's a nice run by Tony Galvin. Archibald to Houghton. A little casual that from Archibald. And a foul by Houghton on Phil Boyer. And the referee going across to Chris Hewton and is going to book him. The result of Archibald selling Hewton rather short with a casual pass, Hewton tried to make up the ground and in doing so was guilty of that trip. He was cautioned. Roberts. Hewton. Stewart on Ardiles. Just a word to Dennis Stewart from the referee after Ardiles had been left on the ground there. That skimmed off Ray Ranson and then McDonald with a mistake and Falco is in here pulling it back for Galvin. Good stop by Joe Corrigan whose defence let him down there. No wonder they're having a go at the two fullbacks. I've never seen two errors like that in such quick succession. Ray Ranson was the first mistake, slicing it. It went across to his partner, McDonald. He made a mess of it. Falco pulled it back for what looked like a good chance for Galvin, and Corrigan saved well. There was a great row going on in the defence after that. Here's Hutchison. 15 minutes gone. Away by Graham Roberts. Here's O'Neill. To Boyer. Good save by Ray Clements. Who kept the ball in and may have a particular personal reason for wanting to play well today. He's been stung by some comments made by the Manchester City manager, John Bond, about his presence in the England team. And he'll be pleased with that save. Going to his left to stop Phil Boyer's shot. Ball by Perryman. Hutchison for City. That was 
another foul. Miss that Caton. Well, Ray Clements wearing gloves, obviously, in conditions like these, but the ball slipped from his grasp there. And Tommy Caton, who's still looking for his first goal in the Football League, hooked it over the bar. Here's Hutchison. He'll get a free kick there against Hoddle. Taken quickly, Hutchison. Ardiles. Hewton. and thinking about the longer throw. On again, there's Boyer in there waiting, so is McDonald. That's Gao, and McDonald is well forward here, and onside, according to the linesman and the referee, yes, no decision given against Bobby McDonald there. Very nicely chipped through, and he'd stayed forward and got his header in, and Clements in the right place. Perryman playing the 1-2 with Hoddle. Villar is in the inside right position. Falco is further down the right. Archibald in the centre here. Hoddle. Villar. Ardiles. Oh, lovely skill, but he couldn't get past the last man who was McDonald. And that was a good ball from Tommy Hutchison. Spurs have got plenty of players in midfield here. This is Archibald. Three to choose from, but he couldn't get proper contact on the ball. And here's Reeves. Getting it back from Hutchison. And McDonald looking up and deciding Reeves is the best option. Hutchison. Boyer's in there. Oh, and that was a chance for Jerry Gow, who just didn't make proper contact. Hutchison chipping the ball in. Phil Boyer found space, knocked the ball on, and Gow coming through unchallenged, put his effort wide. O'Neill. Boyet. O'Neill. Ardiles. Roberts. And back by Tommy Caton. Good header. And by Reeves to Hutchison. But Tottenham near to having a break with uh, Ricky Villa. Players right and left. Hoddle. Galvin. Falco, Galvin. And the two most notable things in that half were the saves by the respective England goalkeepers. Joe Corrigan, who foiled Tony Galvin early in the match, and Ray Clements, who saved well from Phil Boyer. At half-time, then, no score. You'll see from those numbers that some Tottenham players have changed their shirts at half-time, and some haven't. Tony Galvin on the right, obviously kept his on, and Chris Hewton. And Ricky Villar too, it appears, 
have got clean, dry shirts on, and in these conditions, I'm not surprised. And away goes City at the start of the second half. Neither side have used their substitute. So it's Tuart across to Martin O'Neill. Galvin having a run at Ranson and at Gao. Getting past them both. He's got uh, Falco, Archibald and Villa in the middle. Still Galvin. Oh, cut out by McDonald. Gao. dampen the atmosphere of the match as well as its quality but uh, here's Steve Perryman Archibald coming in here back again to Perryman and a goal kick in wet conditions such as these the crowd find it hard to get as excited as they might or shout as loud as they might in better weather which has given the afternoon a fairly damp effect in more ways than one Nevertheless, these two sides produce plenty to talk about in the cup final. Let's see what happens in the second half here. Here's Reeves. Oh, it's O'Neill in here for City. And blocked in the end by a combination of Miller and Roberts. Martin O'Neill looking for his first goal for City, which in fact would be his 50th in league football when it comes along. Reeves is there, away by Falco. Hutchison. Oh, struck Hoddle. Hutchison again. McDonald's in there. Tuitt's in there. Oh, off the line shot by Gal. Well, Dennis Tewitt has scored goals like that before. Remember the overhead kick once that won the League Cup final for City? Well, he holds his head because he was so close again. But Graham Roberts back there doing a fine job and with the goalkeeper beaten, Tottenham survived. As I do this. Well, that's good one-touch football by Tottenham and in the end it was broken up by a very determined Martin O'Neill. Here's Ranson. Close pass to Vili up. He's got Boyer here, number nine. And now Falco tangles with Gao. And Glenn Hoddle with a chance to put Archibald away on this side. Passing back to Ray Clements have not gone down well with the main road crowd. I think, to be honest, the two centre backs, Roberts and Miller, are very determined not to make elementary mistakes on this greasy pitch, and they're playing safe each time. Here's Perryman, Archibald, Villa. Oh, and Tony Galvin in space here. Corrigan touched it out by Caton. Here's Archibald. Oh, what a touch! He's taken it in. Steve Archibald drove it back in and it may even have touched Mark Falco as it went into the net. I thought it did actually. So those two Spurs strikers could argue about who claims the credit. Galvin drove the shot, it was beaten out, Archibald hit it, but I think it just touched Mark Falco on its way in. Keith Birkinshaw pleased to see his side take the lead. Galvin. Oh, and it's a body check by Ray Ranson, and the referee has gone running across. He wants a word, and I think a booking for Ray Ranson. 
Now, those two players, if you cast your mind back to Wembley, were having quite a feud. Ray Ranson and Tony Galvin, and with Galvin playing outside left, it's very much a one against one there, and in the end, Ranson is having his name taken. And I think Tottenham have got things very much in control, which is probably the reason that City will make a substitution. And Phil Boyer goes off, and Kevin Bond, the manager's son, makes his home league debut for Manchester City as their substitute. Away by Roberts to Falco. Oh, <laughs> Falco's <laughs> pass has hit Ricky Villa full in the face. McDonald. And here's Kevin Bond. Bond again. And Reeves comes in. Well, Kevin Bond having come on in an unfamiliar role. Almost made something possible for City there. It was a curling cross which Clements was backpedalling for. Reeves coming in from beyond the far post. And a slightly nasty moment for Spurs. There's Caton. On by Reeves and uh, Miller just holding off to it, who's gone into that centre forward position now. And I think it's to him that City are looking to lift their game. Ranson wide to Hutchison. Held off by Chris Hewton. Free kick. and takes Reeves is there oh and Ray Clements O'Neill shot it was and what Clements uh, got up to there was a little bit debatable for uh, the England keeper he's hurt now but he came to meet that Hutchison free kick Ray Clements and appeared to either miss time or mishandle the ball and in the melee which followed it was Martin O'Neill's shot which was deflected out while that uh, injury is being attended to, the ball was changed. Another throw back to the cup final. And Ardiles won that in the air. Well, John Bond, knowing him, will be decidedly unhappy with this City performance. Quite how much he'll put down to the absentees, I'm not sure at this stage, but at the moment his team badly needs some sort of revival out there. And Kevin Reeves will settle for the corner. City for the moment will settle for anything they can get. Bond with the flick on. Oh, well, Tewitt went in first. McDonald came in last. And the Tottenham header defeated them both. Miller gets up this time. Well, this near post corner, which Kevin Bond was involved in at Norwich, works again there. The flick on across the goal. Tewitt just misses it. And McDonald had it taken out of his path. Ardiles. But that's just a safety ball because Falco is picking himself up after taking a knock and that's the kind of injury Spurs don't want with a European match coming up on Tuesday night and he's hobbling quite badly Mark Falco we're in the last minute of normal time Spurs lead 1-0 and they're playing with only one outright attacker in Archibald at the moment Hutchison. Well, 
What a disappointing day for Manchester City, having run so well in midweek. They've had a toothless look about them this afternoon in attack. And Tottenham have played with some style. Especially Galvin, whose uh, runs on the left have been a perpetual problem to Manchester City's defence. Falco trying to run off an injury. Referee has checked his watch. Here's Ardiles. And Falco finds Ricky Villa. Here's Glenn Hoddle. Here's Ransom. Here's Reed. of the day cameras were here the last time City lost a home league match on the day John Bond took over last October and the team that's ended that run is Tottenham Hotspur who hadn't won here for 11 seasons Steve Archibald whose shot produced the goal Mark Falco whose touch may well have been the one that took it in and they'll be hoping that Falco's late injury won't affect Tottenham's lineup for Tuesday's match against Ajax because today they won away in some comfort. Manchester City nil, Tottenham won.